Hi, in today's class, we'll be discussing about diseases of stomach and we'll be discussing in detail about peptic ulcer. Our learning objectives are to describe the etiopathogenesis of gastritis, list the factors favoring peptic ulcer, enumerate the differences between gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer. It is important to know the anatomy and histology of stomach before we uh, go into the details of gastritis. So the stomach as we know is the continuation of the esophagus and we have the cardiac portion here with the fundus body with the pyloric antrum and the pylorus. The histology of the stomach varies at each region and what is important to remember is that we have mucin secreting glands and these produce the protective mucin. In addition we have parietal cells, chief cells and endocrine cells in the stomach. So now let us classify gastritis. Gastritis can be classified as acute and chronic. In acute gastritis we have acute H. pylori gastritis. Remember H. pylori is a curvilinear bacteria which has predilection in the stomach. It alters the pH of the stomach and weakens the mucin leading to acidity. So it's a very important causative agent for gastritis. The other important ones being bacteria, viruses, fungi in and non-infective gastritis. Then we have chronic gastritis. In this category we have type A autoimmune gastritis, type B H. pylori gastritis, type AB which is the mixed environmental chemical reflux gastritis and miscellaneous form. Type A gastritis is more common in the body and the fundus whereas H. pylori gastritis you have to remember is common in the antrum. So gastritis, I always say whenever there is itis, itis refers to inflammation. So gastritis is an inflammatory condition of the stomach and any inflammatory condition can be acute and chronic. So acute gastritis is a transient acute inflammatory involvement of the stomach, mainly the mucosa. Let us look at the etiology. So it is a very uh, much talked about thing, the diet and the personal habits. So highly spiced food, excessive alcohol consumption, hurry, worry, curry. These are the three things which are always linked to gastritis and spicy food. Then infections, bacterial infections like Helicobacter pylori is very important. In fact, the discovery of it led to a Nobel Prize for medicine. Okay. And staphylococcal food poisoning. Then drugs. Drugs are again very important cause of acute gastritis. The non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, aspirin, even corticosteroids, all of them lead to gastritis and subsequent. Now uh, going into the molecular aspects, so and the microscopic level, what happens is if you look at the stomach, the stomach has a mucus. This mucus is very protective and this mucus, you have to remember, is um, protects our stomach lining from the acidic effects. Now whenever there is a, a mucosal injury, it can be because of the following mechanism, reduced blood flow, increased acid secretion decreased production of bicarbonate buffer okay so this shows you what are the defensive forces protecting our stomach okay the, the bicarbonates the mucosal blood flow the apical surface membrane transport and there is a something called as epithelial regenerative capacity whenever uh, there is a let's say there is a destruction of the epithelial cells over here the cells from this end and this end will come and regenerate to prevent further injury right this a regeneration is a very important concept which are the damaging forces gastric acid and peptic enzymes so on gross how does the stomach appear it appears edematous with hemorrhagic spots which are evident over here on microscopy what do you find here the lamina propria is rich with inflammatory cell infiltrate predominantly neutrophils in between the glands. So coming to uh, 
and then there can be acute gastritis this over a period of time leads to chronic gastritis and this chronic gastritis can be classified as fundic type a antral type b and pan gastritis which is type ab and on the microscopy what you find is if there is atrophic gastritis you can observe here that the normal uh, length of the glands is reduced okay and what you find is lymphoid follicular infiltrate this is a chronic atrophic gastritis seen more in the fundic areas so chronic gastritis is the commonest histologic change observed in biopsies from the stomach average age for symptomatic chronic gastritis is 45 years what are the risk factors diet and personal habits highly spiced food excessive alcohol consumption infections bacterial infections bacterial infections especially helicobacter pylori we have to remember that is one of the most important uh, take home messages of today's lecture all right and in drugs non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs chemical and physical agents such as the corrosive chemicals sometimes they may be poisoning that leads to gastritis and severe stress what are the additional causes reflux reflux of duodenal content into the stomach again as i told you infection with h pylori it's a very very important cause associated conditions of the stomach and duodenum such as ulcers and carcinomas chronic hypochromic anemias are associated with atrophic gastritis and immunological factors such as the auto antibodies to parietal cells in atrophic gastritis and auto antibodies against the intrinsic factor so the mechanism of chronic gastric injury by any of the etiologic agents is by the cytotoxic effects of the injurious agents on the gastric mucosal epithelium thus breaking the barrier and then inciting the inflammatory response as already mentioned it is classified based on the histologic pattern and the sites so we have antral which is type b fundic type a and pan gastritis involving both the areas in type a gastritis which is the body fundic mucosa there are antibodies against the parietal cells and the intrinsic factor there is depletion of parietal cells and impaired secretion of intrinsic factor leading to gastric atrophy wherein intestinal metaplasia may occur and these patients also have a pernicious anemia type b gastritis mainly in the antral mucosa it's also called as hypersecretory gastritis and h pylori related these patients may have associated peptic ulcer then there is type ab type involving the body fundus as well as the antrum it's the most common type of gastritis in all age groups all right and chronic atrophic gastritis used synonymously in the advanced stage as there is progression from chronic superficial gastritis to chronic atrophic gastritis what are the morphologic features so in the gross forms uh, grossly you cannot make it uh, make out much difference microscopically you will have the changes in the mucosa which can be normal atrophied or edematous then we grade them on the regeneration intestinal metaplasia present or absent dysplasia present or absent and we grade the inflammation and we grade the lymphoid follicles all this comes as a part of sydney classification of gastritis so histologically the criteria for categorization is based on the extent of inflammatory changes superficial or deep activity of inflammation quiescent or active acute or chronic presence of and type of metaplasia and morphologically they can be chronic superficial chronic atrophic gastric atrophy chronic hypertrophic gastritis called menetrius disease and uncommon forms of gastritis so coming to chronic superficial gastritis it is comprised of plasma cells and lymphocytes in the superficial layer of the gastric mucosa it may resolve completely or progress to gastric atrophy commonly due to h pylori so h pylori is very nicely depicted here invading the mucosa right and it causes intestinal metaplasia it is interesting to note at that after the intestinal metaplasia comes it is difficult to demonstrate h pylori microscopically so h pylori is a spiral shaped bacteria first reported by warren and marshall in australia in 
as inhabitants of the acid environment of the stomach causing gastritis. Warren and Marshall shared the Nobel Prize in 2005 for their discovery. So it is a causative for almost all active cases of chronic superficial gastritis and 65% of quiescent cases. The organism is identified on the epithelial layer of the luminal surface and does not invade the mucosa not seen in areas with intestinal metaplasia. So how do you diagnose the H. pylori gastritis? It can be diagnosed by sorry yeah. uh, biopsy. A biopsy can be done, endoscopic biopsy and histologic examination with a special strain of GMSA for demonstrating the H. pylori. Biopsy urease test which is quick and simple but not fully sensitive. Culture can be done to determine the specific antibiotic sensitivity. In addition, we have non-invasive tests such as immunoblot and ELISA method and the 14C urea breath test. So this is the consequence of H. pylori infection. It, after months, it leads to asymptomatic infection. After years, it leads to the three types of gastritis. And a gastritis has a potenti uh, potential to go for atrophic gastritis. Then metaplasias can occur, dysplasias and leading to carcinomas or it, in the non-atrophic type it can lead to lymphoproliferative disorders causing a mild lymphoma and an, the antral type of gastritis can lead to duodenal or gastric ulcers. Right. So coming to the chronic atrophic gastritis as I said in this layer in this stage the inflammation will be marked with atrophy of the glands. It is linked with two types of metaplasia intestinal metaplasia and pseudopyloric metaplasia. So we find here there is lot of atrophy present here and gastric atrophy can be there okay and finally there is another type called chronic hypertrophic gastritis also called as menetrius disease. This affects mainly the funding body mucosa and patients present with dyspepsia, hematemesis, melina or protein losing enteropathies. What are the miscellaneous forms of chronic gastritis? We have eosinophilic gastritis, chronic follicular gastritis, hemorrhagic erosive gastritis, and granulomatous gastritis. So, uh, this is the summary of the gastritis, what we have read just now. Right, and we have here that the etiopathogenesis is reflected here. It could be reflux of duodenal contents, infection with H. pylori, disease of the stomach, and Duodenum immunological factors, classification as type A gastritis, type B gastritis, type AB, and the morphological features are chronic superficial, chronic atrophic, gastric atrophy, chronic hypertrophic, and miscellaneous forms. Right, and I think I will be going to the next lecture, and in my next lecture, I will talk in detail about the other type of uh, lesion, which is the peptic ulcer, that is the uh, sequel of chronic gastritis. So we'll go into the next video for that. Alright. So thank you.